Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on Ludicrous Feed, you're with Tesla Tom. Today we're going to run through a bunch of photographs from the Danish capital of Copenhagen in Scandinavia. Scandinavia, as you know, is well known for its electric vehicles and public charging infrastructure. These photographs are courtesy of my sister Sue and her husband Adam. Thank you very much guys. Um, they re recently went on a, a holiday to Scandinavia and they very kindly uh, took some photographs of electric vehicles and also the public charging infrastructure around those countries. If you haven't done so already, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button. Uh, thank you very much for everyone who supported us so far, but uh, stay up to date with the latest videos by hitting that subscribe button. All right, we'll start with this photograph here in uh, Denmark. This is Copenhagen, as I said. It's a beautiful city, and uh, here we've got uh, four public charging stations. They're literally just um, pillars in the ground. And here we can see a BMW i3 and a Renault Zoe parked in those spots. There's a close-up shot of the BMW i3 at the public charger. It looks like you've got probably got to supply your own cable there. Um, it's probably just a post in the ground otherwise. That next shot here is of the Zoe charging. And if I zoom up close, it looks like the company is called Eon. It looks like there's a phone number as well on the post where you can call 24 hours a day if you've got a problem. And that looks like an RFID card, which you may tap, I guess, on that post. And more up close shots of the public charger. That looks like the uh, shot of the charger without the uh, cable in there. Something I guess we can uh, aspire to here in Australia. You know, people ask me, where, where do I charge my car? Well, if, if we had public stations such as this, you know, you could park uh, anywhere on the street and charge up. If you're doing your groceries or visiting somewhere, your car is charging up at the same time. Another shot from behind of the BMW i3 and the Renault Zoe again in those charging spots. There's a Tesla. Interestingly, the Tesla is not charging. So that's you know a bit controversial whether electric vehicles are allowed to park in those spots if they don't charge. And there is uh, a uh, Volkswagen Passat. I think that's a plug-in hybrid charging using the same public charger. There's the Zoe next door charging up as well. The company is called Green Mobility based in Denmark. They've got about 400 electric cars currently around. Uh, Denmark, I assume centered around Copenhagen, which has 1.3 million people in Greater Copenhagen, which is Denmark's biggest city by far. And you can see that one post can charge two cars. So uh, it's not like you need to see those littered everywhere. You know, one between two parking spots is quite efficient use of space. As you can see, the footprint is quite small on the footpath as well. There's a Tesla store in Copenhagen. I won't even uh, pr pretend I can pronounce that. So uh, here's another charging station. A lot of Europe is um, very cycle friendly and, uh, and Sue and Adam certainly said there was um, more bicycle traffic in some parts of Copenhagen. A lot of Europe is quite flat so it makes it quite amenable for cycling. Okay so we are here now closer to the sea. Here we are we've got three of those green mobility vehicles charging up. I'll talk a bit about Denmark um, with regards to electric vehicles. So it kind of lags behind Norway and Sweden. Norway is phenomenal. Yeah, there's a 40% electric vehicle market share currently for new vehicles. And that's just amazing. Uh, from an EV enthusiast such as myself, it just makes me want to cry sometimes thinking about how low we are in Australia when Norway has a 40% market share for new EVs. They're far and away the best. Uh, Germany is up there as well, as is the United Kingdom. Uh, the Scandinavian neighbor of Sweden is not bad at 5%, but Denmark is a bit of a basket case. Uh, from what I've read, Denmark has had a hot and cold relationship with government subsidies uh, with relations to, um, to electric vehicle purchases. So in 2015, its government decided to cut its EV incentives uh, just because they thought, well, it's going to reach parity pretty soon with um, petrol or, or gas-powered cars. Unfortunately, the EV sales of that country dipped after that, and in 2017, a relative handful of cars were sold. Um, back from its higher peak a few years ago when the subsidies were there. So again, that tells me that governments are very important in, um, in promoting electric vehicles, especially in its early uh, infant stage of uptake. And I think in Australia, we need to, to pay attention to that. You know, somewhere like Norway, which is so proactive, can get a 40% market share compared to Denmark, where it's um, a bit more hot and cold. And as you can see, it, it really affects the number of sales. But Denmark, you know, it's, it's actually got one of the highest um, levels of renewable energy uh, input in the world. Uh, it's certainly got the world's largest offshore wind farm. Um, this is very close to the Orison Bridge, which is that famous bridge that bridges Denmark and Sweden, where the bridge becomes a tunnel. And I'll show you a picture of that. This is a video of the offshore wind farm uh, in, in Denmark, very close to Copenhagen. So, you know, Denmark certainly leads the way with renewable energy. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. 
I hope you've enjoyed that and hope it's a lovely day wherever you are in this world. And as always, happy charging. Thanks for watching and thanks for being part of the energy revolution. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit subscribe to keep up to date with our latest videos. If you're about to buy a Tesla, use our promo code on screen to score free unlimited supercharging. Happy charging!